Hello everybody and welcome to this month's agricology vlog. I'm Richard Smith from Dalesford Organic Farms. Last month we talked about sowing grass seeds and the importance of getting them in properly in the autumn. I also said that I don't like to put my grass seed in until the end of August, early September. You're basically guaranteed of a bit of moisture. However, we have had this two or three weeks of very nice end of summer weather. But the seed hasn't chitted, we've now had a nice rain and so I'm expecting over the next few days to see this green up with my clover and grass lay. Now normally, minimal soil disturbance, you'd obviously have a great chance to under sow your cereal crop when it went down to grass and so there you've got 0% soil disturbance. This farm we've just taken on, it's 450 acres and the previous farmer obviously grew cereal crops. We couldn't get on until the end of August. So we've come in after the combine in the stock and we've cultivated lightly the topsoil. So we've gone through with the cultivator very quickly and just chitted up and made a bit of a tilth. And then we've applied the grass seed with an iron bulk. So it's basically just blowing the seed onto top, harrowing it lightly and then we've rolled it in real tightly. You can see here the stubble still in the topsoil. Um, it was a very quick operation. We managed to come in in that nice weather get our grass seed on and now we've had some moisture and away it goes. I think that <clears throat> for me the moldboard plough is a very important tool in organic farming and we try to keep it down to a one in six, one in five minimum moldboard use. The beauty of a moldboard of course plough is that you're actually ploughing down all of the rubbish you get a great opportunity for a clean seedbed to set your next crop away. So the absolute non-use of a mould board, I don't think um, is going to work in my system, but I try and keep soil disturbance down to a minimum. Of course, we're learning all sorts now about soil care and health through proper management. This grass seed went in, as I said, about three weeks ago. It's been very dry. <clears throat> we put in a grass seed mix of red clover, about one third of the seed makeup. So the seed went on actually at 32 kilograms per hectare. 34% of that mixture was red clover of different varieties and 66% was rye grass. Now the reason I've done that is, is because I want this dual purpose for my clover lays. Obviously clover is super important to an organic system for fixing atmospheric nitrogen, this legumous plant. It's very good at suppressing weeds so you end up with a very nice clean crop. The reason I put rye grass in is because I also want to graze animals on it. And you'll find that when you put lambs onto here, um, hopefully by mid-October, the end of October, what they'll do is they'll go through and pick at all the rye grass first and then they'll come back onto the red clover very steadily and that eliminates any worry about bloat in that livestock. But this minimum soil disturbance application is very, very possible. I'd always advise that you put grass seed in in the autumn, not in the spring, unless you're under sowing. Now when you under sow a cereal crop, what I generally do is, is drill <coughs> uh, my uh, cereal crop, whether it's barley, wheat, oats, etc. And then six weeks later, I'll come in with the iron box. So I'm harrowcombing the crop, but I'm also applying the grass seed also makes when it's harvested you've got that very nice grass in the straw makes a very good animal feed so we're looking for as much forage as we can get and if it's a slow establishment i have had crops where we've combined it and thought goodness me you know this hasn't worked the syrup the uh, grass seed and the clover hasn't established itself but actually as soon as the light comes in the crop is off you'll find that it just gets away and some of the best lays i've ever established have been via that under sowing technique so that's a really good way of creating a system with minimal disturbance here as i said we're actually um, in land that i couldn't get on to the under sow and so we've just literally uh, scratched the top with a cultivator lightly got a bit of a tilt put a grass seed on and rolled it in really tightly hope you found that useful speak to you next month Hi again everybody, um, we've just been out and done a vlog on minimum soil disturbance and I've talked to you about um, grass lays, now we put them into stubble and so on and under sowing grass seed into cereal crops. We're just driving home and I 
this mob of cattle I came out first thing this morning and looked at them and they're a huge source of pride and what you're looking at here are Hereford Cross cows that have then gone to a beef breed sire. Many years ago when we started thinking much more about sustainability was the dairy herd came into focus and we were milking Holstein cows trying to get as much milk out of them as we could and we took the decision to breed back to a pure British Frisian and in 2012 I think it was we gained pedigree status within our Frisian herd in fact I'm going to show you some beautiful heifers a bit later on to show you that whole stratification that that level of breeding that we got to and what we produce from it so we've ended up with a herd of pedigree British Frisians that produce around six six and a half thousand litres of milk they're lasting for six seven lactations in fact many are more than that so our replacement heifers coming into the dairy the need for them is far less so the vast majority of our dairy cows now our Frisians go to Hereford bulls or Hereford semen and this is the product of that these white faced cows which are absolutely tremendous so we keep a group every year from them the best of the heifers and then they go to terminal sires so I've now got a uh, a dairy herd which is producing milk of course it's producing beef from its bull calves and secondary heifers and it's also producing this single suckle herd and these really give you the value and you can see the credit in hybrid vigor so you've taken that pure Frisian crossed in with a pure Hereford and you've got all the attributes of its mother the milkiness of its mother and you've got the eating quality and the beef growth of the Hereford so you know they make me smile every time I look at them and I couldn't resist showing you these cattle at the end of this vlog these cows would only be four years old at the most they've already given me a couple of calves and it's highly likely that they'll be here for another 12 years so super sustainable cows they're not fed any corn whatsoever and just look at the busting calves on these cows they'd all have been sort of February March born I bet the best of these calves go 375 kilos now they went to the majority of these have gone to South Devon there's the odd one or two in here that haven't but the majority went to South Devon and just look at the quality of calves we've got from them from this clover grass lay um, super super sustainable and a huge source of pride 30 40 years ago the Hereford Cross Frisian would have been the backbone of the British beef industry I think you know as the dairy herd was um, but of course very few Frisians around now with much nicer conformation and fleshiness as opposed to the Holstein which most farmers have favoured because of their ability to produce large numbers um, of litres of milk but couldn't resist showing you them nice group of Frisian heifers on the way home so I'm going to show you those as well but I hope you enjoyed looking at them as much as I do and I could thoroughly recommend that if you can get hold of any Frisian cross Hereford heifers or cows then go for it because they're just so productive um, and beautiful cattle to work with and they are fantastic I tell you so then just to finish up I wanted to show you the type of Frisian animal that we're breeding these are going to be two years old in November. They run with a Hereford bull at the beginning of the year and they'll calve down and come into the dairy at the end of the year. Just fantastic animals, great converse, uh, 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 confirmation um, about them, beautiful temperaments and these are going to go on to be some tremendous 